Hey, it's Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. Today is January 5th, and um, we are getting some winter weather here for a change. It's down around 10 this morning, and it's about right for this time of the year here in northern Michigan. So uh, I feel as though we've had an a, a, a easy winter so far, and I'm glad of it. All right, so I've got to brief you on something that's come to light here recently, and um, I just feel it's important to brief on this, otherwise you will not know what happened. And I think it's important for people these days to understand what's happening um, to their food system and who's doing it. That's also important to know. Um, you know, we, as many of you know, or if you don't know, I'll tell you, about uh, three weeks ago, the... Uh, Department of Agriculture rolled up the driveway with a search warrant and with them was a USDA inspector and then three state policemen and I'm told that they had a big contingent in town that was waiting to come. I did not see that but some customers of ours said that they saw that. Whether they were going to come here I don't know. I couldn't prove that but there was a contingent of cars, three other police cars and a bunch of other state cars sitting there. Um, <clears throat> this search warrant gave them the authority to search my facilities, my records, my vehicles. The search warrant said that they were looking for suspected adulterated food. Okay, so it didn't have to be adulterated. It had to be suspected of being adulterated. Okay, so let me tell you what adulterated means. It's like the word adultery if you have a marriage of two people and then a third person comes into it the marriage has been adulterated by a third person right so let's say you have a steak um, or a pork chop let's say because we're in the pork business more than the beef business um, in order to adulterate that there's got to be something there that doesn't belong there and that could be, you know, a chicken feather, it could be a piece of glass, it could be um, a concentration of uh, bacteria, something like that. So this warrant gave them the ability to seize anything that they suspected of being adulterated. Just all they have to do is have a suspicion, you know. And that's, uh, that's pretty subjective in, in my opinion. And uh, warrants are not supposed to be that way. And I, I think the judge got duped on this one. A warrant came across and the judge just signed it. Because I don't think this elected judge would have done that. It just doesn't seem right. And the people that I know that know her say that, uh, I don't know, I think she's probably going to back up on that one. We'll see. Um, they showed up here, uh, pulled up pretty quick, unannounced. And... Um, I think they expected me to just back right off and let them look through all my stuff. Hey, have a look at my wife's underwear drawer while you're at it. I don't feel that way, so I took a copy of that warrant and also took some IDs and took them in the house and uh, did a little investigating on this whole thing, sent that to my lawyer, had him look it over, and uh, made them wait a little bit until my, some of my friends showed up. I wanted witnesses here. I didn't want a bunch of little kids um, to witness these guys pawn through our stuff um, looking for suspected adulterated food. All right? <clears throat> and so they, they got bugged. They didn't want to wait. I guess they were cold or something, and they split. I didn't impede this uh, warrant search, this warranted search, per the Fourth Amendment. I did not impede that. I just told them they had to wait. Okay, now let me tell you why, what instigated this warranted search in the first place. Because I found out. I know the who, when, and why now. <clears throat> and uh, I'm not exactly sure what to do about that. But it started at a restaurant in Traverse City, a guy that I've known for over 10 years. Consider him a pretty good friend. You know, we've spent a lot of time together doing stuff. And he's one of the only restaurants that I still have that hasn't been uh, threatened out of business. 
This picture was taken for a magazine, right? That's my chef friend, his name's Eric. And that's a ham from one of our Mangalitsa pigs. And the question was, was that pig processed at a USDA inspected plant? Um, they never asked me that question. They just made an assumption that it was not. And it was totally an assumption. They've still never asked me that question. Uh, they asked the chef. He didn't have an answer for him. But they never asked me. So why did the USDA flag on a picture in some obscure cigar magazine? Why does that happen? Does do they have USDA agents that go through every magazine, and if they see a picture and they suspect something's wrong, they go to a judge, get a search warrant of a farmer's home, his facilities, his vehicles, and then roar up the driveway with three state policemen and a bunch of backups? Is that how it works? I ask you that. Is that how it works? Well, that's not what happened in this case. In this case, there was one individual who happened to be going through that magazine. And that individual looked at that and said, I don't think that's right. And that individual detailed the health department into that man's restaurant. Now that man, the, the chef, should be really irritated at that, at that individual, for being a little think. For doing that. Now, I know that individuals can say, well, I'm concerned with food safety. All right, let's talk about food safety and this ham. As you will notice, when you look at this ham, that ham is whole. And it's obvious, it should be obvious, that this is a photo op. All right? Chefs don't dress like that. I got news for you. They don't dress like that. Not all the time. This guy does. He's cruising around his restaurant sometimes, just meeting with... Uh, customers but normally chefs wear whites and I called and talked to my friend Eric and I said uh, where is this ham now and he says well it's over at so-and-so's house I said did you serve it in the restaurant and he said no we have not even cut into it yet we're gonna let it hang for a while so here we have <laughs> three government agencies detailed by one civilian individual that initiated a search warrant and had to bring police with them and huge backup in town over a ham in a photo that had not even been cut into or served to the public. Okay? I hope this is shaping up for you. And it goes from there. This is the destruction that these people are capable, capable of. I have another store in Marquette. Um, we went to Great Pangs to get that customer and had product in their store. And several days after this incident, um, the same group showed up in this man's store. He had a lunch counter. They laid out their briefcases and their laptops, and they went through every piece of meat that had Baker's Green Acres on it, and they had it all laid out. They started this at noon, right during his lunch hour, and pressed on till 5.30. And then they left without saying a word. How's that, how's that for business? How's that help your business? you got the health department there, the USDA and the MDA going pawn through all your stuff during prime business hours, you know. That owner of that store will not return my phone call, you know. I want to kind of make things better with him. He's got several thousand dollars worth of inventory in his store. I don't think he's going to order again. I don't even know if I'll get paid for my stuff all because of this one individual that made this phone call to the health department. I mean, how does this individual, where does he get the authority to detail the health department and the MDA and the USDA? How does that happen? How does that work? I don't get that. The other incident is even worse. There's a, a resort south of me. <clears throat> the chef there has been to our farm and he's helped us with processing and he's gotten to be a pretty good friend. He's uh, 
in his 60s. He's a well-rounded chef, been around. He's highly paid at this place. Um, he's a good chef. And um, MDA and USDA Health Department did the same thing to him. They went in into his resort, pulled all the stuff out, looked through all the stuff. Only Baker's Green Acres stuff, though, right? All the stuff that came from food service or Cisco or any of the other distributors. They didn't look at that. No, they didn't look at that. And it just so happens that his boss, the owner of the resort, was there, saw these state cars in the driveway, and my chef friend no longer has a job there. So it cost the man a job. Now they say they've changed their business model and they had to let him go, but uh, it's an awful coincidence. And, uh, you know, it's done a, they'll, they'll never order from us again. So what is going on here? All right, this is the state agencies that are detailed by a private entity to drain us of any financial resources that we have to put us out of business. Okay, I just want to tell you that's what's going on, and uh, every bit of it I can prove. There's going to be more to come on that, um, and I do have some other interesting announcements that will be coming as uh, the week progresses. This is Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm.